What up, gang? Just over here with Chris. Yeah, they don't have rear foot digs. Norm Moffat getting it all set up, guys. Got strapping in. It's been raining really bad. You guys can see we it rained the whole entire trip up. And obviously we're dealing with it right now, but yeah, kind of crazy. I'm the first one on the dyno this morning, so it's probably gonna be it's gotta warm everything up. The tires are wet too, so we'll have to check it all out. But the baby's getting strapped in. I think Chris is gonna be working on it, so keep you guys posted. I was talking to Chris and he was telling me that he does anywhere from five to six of these dyno tunes basically a week, but he gets hundreds of ECUs that are shipped in. And those ECUs obviously are programmed on computers back inside the shop. So just imagine how crazy of a cool business that he has. I, I've always been impressed with him because he's such a nice guy, super down, down to earth. And um, at the same time, he really knows his stuff. So that's why I came to the very best for this one here. I'm really glad that I didn't use a power commander on this bike. So we'll get it all flashed up and it'll be great. But there's a holding room back here and you guys can see and it's so nice because he provides hearing protection for all the people back here, but I'm the only one here today, obviously. And then we'll uh, get her. We'll get underway here in just a little bit, guys. You can see they've got to get everything strapped in super, super tight, obviously. The bike also has a brand new tire on it. I'll be frank with you, new tires obviously don't dyno very well. Um, but it is what it is. We're just going to have to work with it. The bike only has 14 miles on it too, so I'm, I would be surprised if I didn't see smoke coming out of the engine after this thing is run hard. One thing too, from a maintenance standpoint, we are going to probably end up doing an oil change the minute that I get back uh, to the beach. So we will obviously take into consideration that once everything is said and done. So again, the only modifications that have been done on the bike is going to be the AT2. Yoshimura pipe along with the tail tidy that I got from New Rage and that's literally what we're going to be uh, working with. I haven't done anything to the engine. This is straight stock. Uh, you guys know this bike does come already equipped with titanium rods and it's going to be one heck of a, I think it's going to be one heck of a dyno tan. Uh, looking forward to seeing what's going to show up on that screen once everything is said and done. We got everything cinched down real quick. Obviously now it's time to work the magic. Trip is so cool. Sir, what's your first and last name? It's AMA. George is my first name. People know me as CK though. That's my nickname. CK. Yeah. It's probably easier to remember CK. There you go. What is this extra harness you got on here? These turn signals? Possibly. The From the tail tidy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just a new rage plug and play one. Yeah, no If you needed to remove that servo, you could too. I don't, I mean, we're obviously are not going to need that for this. No, you definitely won't. We'll get rid of that. Yeah, that way you have space to do whatever you gotta do down there. We just kept in there so the check engine light didn't go on because I didn't have a freaking servo buddy. Yeah, yeah, no problem. I was like, I'll just get it up there and he'll, he'll probably end up turning it off anyway. Yup. I got a funny feeling after this, this bike is, I mean, the bike stock is crazy fast already. Yeah. But after this, I kind of feel like it's gonna be dangerous fast. <laughs> yeah, it definitely will. Uh, so the only thing, it, it's up to you, the, we can make the on-off throttle a 
million times smoother. But when we do that, we have to do what they call the decel fuel cut option, okay? Yep. And when we do that decel fuel cut option, it keeps the fuel injectors running while you're off the throttle. So when you let off the gas, the, the fuel injectors are spraying bare minimum fuel, okay? Well, Which keeps me from getting thrown off in the corner when I come in hard. That is correct. Because I've done that. My, my ZX-10R, uh, when we flashed it, we lost a lot. Like, I don't know if this works, if this is going to happen to this bike too, but when, like, the blipper was so rough on the downshift, that's holy wrong. hell, dude, it almost threw me off the freaking tank. That's what I was just about to tell you. Because I was coming down, I mean, we we're going 145 miles an hour down to, like, 65 yeah, into a turn. I, I about I lost it. Blipper jumping in. That, and the reason for that is the fuel injectors are running. And now the throttle blips open. So what happens when you give it gas and you rev it up? It oh, it was, I mean, it's so violent. I almost like, I almost felt like I was going to go over the bars. I'm like, yeah, I wasn't, I, I wasn't expecting it because my R1s don't do that. that. None of my other bikes do that, that thing. I know. None of them. Only yeah, this bike. It's this one. Yeah. They suck when you do that. Um, is it going to, is it going to be that way after this is done? Do you think? Yeah. If we turn the diesel fuel cut option on. In other words, I can make it not do it, but it don't ride as smooth. When you say ride as smooth, you mean like coming down off, off throttle. throttle. It'll, it'll, it'll do this. Uh, not necessarily that. It's, just, it's more like stock as far as the, the you know, when you barely let off the throttle. It knows oh, it just thumps. Yeah. Gotcha. I wonder what's worse. Is it worse having the, the downshift? I feel like I'm getting thrown off the freaking tank or just having that thump. I don't know. Huh? Everybody I've done it for, I've had people complain, and then we, they're like, oh, I'll put it back the other way. I put it back the other way, and they ride it for like a month. They're like, dude, put it back the other way. <laughs> like, I, I don't, you know, I just not use the auto blipper. Yeah. I love the auto blipper. I mean, it's smooth as pie right now. I mean, it's very, very, it's very fluid. Nah, it'll be jumpy when you get it back. Like I said, if we do that. But everybody, like I said, I've done it both ways, and it, it definitely rides better. A million times better you know. with the diesel. Yeah, I trust you, man. I mean, like I said, if it if it is what it is, it is what it is. Yeah, like I said, I just wouldn't use that auto blipper. And like I said, it, it does way better. I wonder if they'll ever have a fix for that. You know. I don't know if Woolwich would come up with something that's going to be... No, because the way Kawasaki has the ECU design, yep. or the quick shifter design in the ECU, it uses what they call ignition cut. So it cuts the ignition off for a split second. Yeah. A lot of the other bikes use fuel cut, which cuts the fuel injectors off for a quick second. Is that why a lot of guys put those power commanders on there? Is that the reason why? Uh, like they'll do an ECU flash, but they also use a power command, like a PC6 or something? Well, that's because they don't have the ability to go back and adjust them. So, I see. The a lot of times the uh, sometimes power commanders use fuel cut for their shifters. Sometimes they don't. Yeah. Ninety percent of the time, power commander shifters suck. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and a power commander six, the whole thing sucks. I almost, I almost did a, just a regular PC6 on this one because I didn't want to lose that smoothness of the, of the uh, blipper. Yeah. But, you know, I, I just don't, like I said, it's well, so violent. But at that point, your throttle plane's still on open. Sure, sure. But a PC6 has a bunch of EPA restriction bullshit on them, and they won't, uh, in other words, they, the, you can't adjust the fueling under 6,000 RPM. Really? So, I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that at all. They only work running wide open throttle. And they only work within a 10% window because that's all the government says they should be able to Really? Do. Yeah, that's info I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, Power Commander ain't going to tell you this new product ain't as good as the old one, but that wouldn't be a very good selling point. No. So let me see if I understand you correctly. So if you, if you take the D cell off, the blipper will still be smooth if the D, if the actual if thing is keep the D cell stock. So the way the bike rides now, the on all throttle, that's how it'll ride when you get it back, and the the auto blipper will remain smooth. Stock, yes. Does it take away from any crazy performance in your opinion? Zero. Just makes it ride smooth. 
I mean, it's literally just a click of a button for me. It's nothing to it. You know what I mean? I think I still, I, I know how violent that blipper is, like coming down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it scared so, me. I mean, if you like the way the bike rides now, as far as like engine braking and stuff. Yep. You know, then we can leave it as is. Because I can adjust engine braking on the, on the. You can adjust engine braking, yes. Yeah. I think I'm going to, let's do it that way, bud. Okay. Because I, I'm telling you, I understand the violence of that move. It was yeah, bad. It was bad, dude. Yeah. Whatever you like. I mean, I, I still you know, tend it the same. You know, I just yep. literally activate that button or deactivate that button. Yeah. Let's keep it smooth. Yeah, that's okay. the case. Just because I know what it feels like, it's not pretty. All right, we're just going to let it warm up. Sure. And I'll make a pull with it here in just a second. Okay, no worries. You're good. much that chain is going to stretch from this. <laughs> yeah. It's going to get stretched like pretty bad. Yeah. What? Mine's like about 14 miles on it. I only ran it like this once. So yeah. It wasn't anything crazy. Because it's been raining too. We haven't had a lot of dry days. I literally, I, I took it out and almost fell over because it was so fast. The freaking slicks are bad, you know, so... Guys, it's so cool talking to Chris because he's just a wealth of knowledge. He's just so nice, like down to the earth. I like guys like him, you know. And I know the bike is going to be stellar. It's stellar. Stellar. Yeah, and my auto blipper is going to be smooth. Get that. As you guys can see, the program, we're flashing the ECU right now, so the program is running. It takes about 15, 20 minutes for it to run. Once we do that, then we'll start doing the, the actual pulls to fine tune it. But this is the same thing, guys. If you end up sending a, your actual ECU unit into uh, More Mafia, they will flash the same exact way uh, using the computer and then repackage it and send it back out to you. The one thing that you don't get is the fine tuning that comes afterwards on the dyno chip. Which is one of the reasons why we made the trek up here to do that because I knew for a fact that even though it would be a stocky C flash, there would be probably some things that would need to be done to the bike in order to make it perfect. And that's the reason why you do it this way. So the good news is, you call it, um, and you guys have seen me do this to the R1, R1M. It's the same exact programs that we use on that side there. The only difference is um, we basically are going to be fine tuning the map and also whatever. Chris may see that um, will improve the performance of the bike ultimately by the time it rolls out of here. All right, so we got the flash on. Got now the we. Flash, the old bike, it's out of here. Okay, it's old bike on. <laughs> I'm gonna have to find a, a loading GIF, the one that says loading. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys, this is gonna be the first run after post ECU flash.
that was quite the improvement. Uh, how much is that, dude? 30, yeah, that was easy. 21 more horsepower? Yeah. Well, that's, it's actually more than that at Redline. So your peak is 20 something different. But at Redline, you're gaining even more than that. That was actually pretty freaking sick. Yeah, buddy. where it fell off real bad before, now it holds all the way out. So we'll fine tune the air fuel ratio and tweak all this in, make even more horsepower to next. Wow. That was quite the improvement on just the street. Flat. Now we fine tune. So Chris, what do you see as you go in to fine tune something What's your, what's your goal? Uh, just get the air fuel ratio right. Um, and then of course, you know, trying to tweak, if we see any dips in power or anything, you know, with yours so far, there's nothing abnormal or goofy going on as far as like, you know, your power curve, I guess you could say. Sure. Uh, in other words, everything looks totally normal. Obviously guys, anybody within driving distance, I would highly recommend that, you know, if you're gonna do an ECU flash, the dyno tune or being on the jet itself, it's probably the best way to fine tune everything after the fact. Yeah, for sure. Basically what it is. Uh, yeah. We're talking about the air filters, guys. Obviously everything is highly dependent on the air fuel mixture. engine is getting what it needs to produce the power. We're on the problem. So this one here, there's going to be, the D cell is going to be turned off, you said, right? Uh, it's off. Okay. And that's going to preserve the smoothness of the blipper, guys. I know that we talked a lot about that last time with the zx r how abrupt and rough it was, and there's a lot of you complaining about that. So that's Chris's fix, literally, for that problem. And well, then you so get- we're gonna you, have the, the fuel cut option is gonna be set to stock. So in other words, when you let off the throttle, you will feel a little more nose dive, but you're not gonna have that jumpy on a blipper. Yep, and that's the one thing I think a lot of you guys were complaining about when we were, all the guys that had ZX-10Rs were saying, Dude, I about fell off the freaking tank when that thing got got tuned. I was like, and we were all saying the same thing, yeah, and everyone. It's basically, and, one or the other. You're gonna complain because it nose dives like factory, or because the auto blipper jumpy. So, in your case, you chose to have the auto blipper smooth, and then we keep the, the engine braking a little more. Um, so, literally, it's just preference. There is no right or wrong. I literally just click a button, so I, it's either activate or deactivate. You know, so. Whichever one you like, we can easily do. And I hope you guys are listening too, because a lot of you guys, obviously, do we ride on the track? Yes, but that's 10% of what I do. 90% I'm on the road. So if you're looking for comfort and you guys are looking to have that decel, especially with the blipper on, where it is smooth and you're not getting thrown over your tank, maybe that's the route for you guys. It's up to you guys. Kind of yeah, like Chris whichever says. one you like. Uh, I feel like you can get used to riding it either direction. Um, so me, myself, you know, I rode the ZX-10 that I had. And I liked it better with the D-cell fuel cut option on. So when I let off the throttle, the fuel injectors keep running. It makes the bike ride a lot better. And I just didn't use the auto blipper. Um, but, I mean, I see where both ways, you know, you can get used to it either direction, in other words. So whichever one, you know, if you don't mind the, the you know, when you let off the gas, then keep it as is and then your auto blipper stays running smooth. Let me ask you a question though too. So if you're if you're if you're on throttle, obviously you know if you if you just release, that's where you get that throw. If you're coming off and you actually give it, if you if you're coming Once off, it gets oh. to a certain point, it's cutting them off. Okay, so it's automatic. Okay, and hope you guys what, are listening to that. That's it's automatic. What people complain about that they don't like when they're riding them is that when they 
let's just say go to ease off the throttle, the thing, and then when they go to get it back, it's an abrupt jerk, um, and, and we can correct all that and smooth that out. You do have to relearn how to ride the bike a little bit, because if you're coming into a corner and you let off the gas and you're expecting the engine to slow it down and stop it, and don't really do that no more. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. We're keeping the on-off throttle smooth by keeping the throttle on, basically. You know what I mean? Um, so in tuning these things, it's, I'm not going to say easier than people think, but it's common sense, okay? Uh, the fuel injectors cut off when you let off the your hand a certain percentage. Well, how do we fix that? Well, we keep the fuel running. Well, what does it do when we keep the fuel running and you have a gasoline engine and you get it gas? What does it do? Rev up. Revs up. up. Yep. So when you are giving it gas, squirting in there, and you blip the throttle, it does exactly what it does. Boop. You know, the throttle plates open and close. Well, when it opens and they're getting gasoline, what happens? Vroom! It wants to take off. And that's why you get that jerking sensation because literally you open the throttle plates, you were squirting gasoline in there, and the engine did exactly what you told it to do. That's go. So yeah, I hope you guys are listening to that. That's that's super super. I mean, it's education right there for you all. I'll tell you this though. Again, a matter of preference. And there was a lot of you guys, like I said, that when we were talking the last time when we were on that live, a lot of you were like, "Dude, I don't know if I could ever get used to it just throwing me off the tank like that." And again, for you guys that are that are barreling down tracks, you guys know we were at 145, 155 miles an hour heading into a turn. You're going from literally six to third or second it can get pretty violent if you're gonna be using your blipper. So again, if you're not gonna be using your blipper, it is what it is. If you're using it in the street a lot and you guys are afraid, like to Chris's point, I have a friend that actually has a D-cell on his too. He will take his hand off of the actual throttle and he'll nearly rear end somebody because his bike doesn't stop. So it's like he's gotta hit it hard. Front brake and the rear brake. I wish Kawasaki had the ability to go in and, or even I had the ability to go in and deactivate just the blipper. Yes. I can't deactivate just the blipper. I can, me and you can deactivate the shifter itself, but you can't act, deactivate the downside and keep the upside. So that kind of sucks. Again, fine tune balance, matter of preference, guys. Either way, it can be done. According to Chris, the flick of a switch in the software. Um, just depends on what you guys are, are looking for. Me, personally, because this bike, I'm gonna have it obviously on the track and everything too, but I, I do ride it a lot in the street. You guys see me a lot on the beach going up and down. And so for me to have a smooth blipper is important. So my R1M, that was one thing too, and I had it um, flashed. The same thing was a, was a consideration and that thing is butter and it still has lots of horsepower. I'm hoping this bike will do the same thing. And we're just flashing it now, the, all the adjustments you made, right? Yeah, so we're, we'll cut here guys. Well, no, I'll see you in just a second. All right, guys, so the adjustments we made for the first, uh, the first fuel adjustment. So we just uploaded it. The new map to the bike. So now we're going to test.
Like it? That was the D cell turned off too, right? Correct. How bad? You could tell it had a lot more engine braking, basically. Yes. But 191 is all we're seeing on the drum, I guess you would say, or as on the display. Yeah, new tires are always an issue, bud. They always have been. Hey guys, we're gonna test this one again see exactly with this adjustment, but we should, we should be done here, which will be great. So currently right now, Chris has got it uh, down at 191. Because it is a new bike and it also has a new tire, we actually are probably getting a little bit more horsepower out of it, but it's slipping, obviously.
close finish.
something. Looks good, bud. Sounds good. Yeah, so. Pull up your before and after. Yeah. So, so 169.21, right? Look at that. Yeah. Nice. yeah, so at 14 plus, let's see, if we go to 14,000 RPMs, or 13.9, you went from 122 to 190. Yeah, that would say that's a pretty big difference. Yeah, yeah. you should feel uh, that. I mean, literally, holy crap! This is why you come to Chris, guys. I mean, I don't think there's a more perfect. If you guys look at the air field mixture too, I mean, look at how beautiful that line is. I mean, it doesn't get any more perfect than that. And I'll show you this here too. So that's what we started with. That's what we ended with. One ninety two point nine five. Boy, that means crank horsepower is freaking crazy, huh? Uh, yeah, so usually you're gonna add 15-ish. Um, yeah. You know, I don't know the exact number, but I would say at least 15 to it, you know what I mean? Huh, huh. Yes, sir. Well, the spike is ready, guys. She is finally ready to roll. Are you just gonna pull out that servo? Just, All right, take it out. You can have it, dude. I don't yeah, freaking I care. Pull yeah. Trash. yeah, I don't need it. Away about five a, week. a lot of you guys too that, users, that are using servo buddies, just so you, for all the new guys, um, yeah, when I mean, do you do get you a flash? Your ECU flash, you don't, as a servo buddy, you don't have to pay $70, $60? Yeah. That's that much money you paid towards the flash, and now you got horsepower and no checking the light. And also a lighter bike. <laughs> exactly. Just less clutter and jump. Yeah, it's more space to work back there, which is great. So, Chris, thank you so much, bud. Thank you for coming. No, always, man. I think I, I think I might take a trek back up here with the R1M. <laughs> yeah, we can definitely hook it up. I got one myself, so I know a few things to do. Tomorrow. Yeah, so that might be the next little little rendezvous that we make back up here to, to Taylor's. But I'll tell you right now, man, yeah, I'm very pleased. Yeah, offenders, so. Yeah, exactly. Can't, once you get one hit, dude, it's like crack, you know? That's it. Anyway, guys, I love you all. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, we'll see you guys on the other side. Peace.